All right, Alex Worth here at the Caddis Fly Shop with the Oregon Fly Fishing Blog. We're going to be tying up this little green drake pattern I've been cooking up. I love the extended body style. I love using natural tying materials like this deer hair that I've used for that extended body. And uh, this is one that I am pretty excited to fish when the green drakes start showing up in our local waters. So, uh, yeah, hope you enjoy. Starting off here. I'm going to be tying the uh, extended body on a needle. This is a technique that I kind of just adapted from a video I saw a long time ago um, from Barry Ord Clark. Uh, if you don't know his stuff, you should look him up. He's got a lot of really helpful uh, instructionals. I'm going to take some of this uh, David McPhail brand. It's just not, it's not actually, it's a, what is this brand? Fly, Flymaker. Flymaker wax. <clears throat> I'm just going to rub it along the needle just so it's really easy to get everything off of here. Once I'm done with my extended body, um, you don't need to do that. It just makes life a little easier. I'm going to be using some UTC 70 denier. Uh, with this the needle, you can use a pin. You can use like a regular sewing needle. Um, you could use an old bodkin. Let's go a couple wraps up here. And then instead of trimming this tag, I'm going to lay this down and put it in my material clip over here because I, I want to use that. I'm going to tie that in um, when I do my, uh, or when I tie this onto the actual hook. So I've got that pretty much down to the very, very end um, of that needle. I'm going to take some moose body hair. I'm going to take about maybe like 8 to 10 fibers from this hank here, trim them out. This is about what we're working with. I'm going to trim out the really shorties, or pull out the real shorties in the, uh, the under fur here as well. We got some video content going on in the background there. Is that the basketball game? I have no idea. <laughs> Go Blazers. <laughs> that was yesterday. Oh, they aren't playing tonight. No. Yeah, I'm an idiot. They're playing in two days now. Caddis Fly Shop, we have online services. All right, stacking up the uh, the hair here. I'm gonna go tips out in the direction of the needle point. Thank you for calling the Caddis Fly And I'm gonna extend this about basically what's gonna end up being the equivalent of a hook shank in length here past the end of the needle. Whoops, keep moving that, that's too loose. And I'm just gonna loosely bring that down so that the, uh, the tips of this moose body here are kinda all the way around the needle. And I'm gonna take a pinch wrap here, loosely, two, three wraps, and then I'm gonna pull it tight, and then I'm gonna take a few loose spiraling wraps backwards just to kind of secure all of these down um, and together. So I'm basically, I'm gonna get down to about the end of where that, that body is, and then I'm gonna spiral it backwards, again, back to where I just tied everything in, and then I'm gonna do a couple of half hitches right there. I'm not gonna pull these super tight, just tight enough that they see. And this will just help again with the durability of this. Um, if you wanted to, at, at this point, whoops, bounce the thread off of the end of the bobbin there. Whoops, I did it again. Oopsie. Now we're good. Um, if you wanted to at this point, it wouldn't be a bad idea to lay down a little bit of super glue. Um, so just for the sake of it, I'm going to do that. Dean it a little bit right there on the ends of the thread. That's normally when it starts, where it starts to unravel. Um, next I'm going to take some deer belly hair dyed over white in olive. I'm going to take less, less is kind of more here. You don't really need all that much to make this thing work. I'm going to take probably, I don't know, 19 hairs. Uh, it looks more like 18. Count them out. I probably won't do that. But basically you want uh, mostly the longer ones here. The shorter ones you're not going to be able to tie with. So I'm just going to get to a, maybe, I don't know, like an inch and a quarter. I don't know if you can see the length there. 
about an inch and a quarter and trim out or pull out everything that's shorter than that including that under fur um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stack it it doesn't stack super well because this deer belly here is kinda twisty oh dog's back hi dog Oh, good dog. Bad dog. <clears throat> she's eating the lizard food. Did she eat any? No. Oh, no, good. That would be so like gross. All right, and I'm going to go, tips of this deer hair is going to go down to where that thread stopped. And I'm going to do the same thing I did with the, the moose mane or moose body. I'm gonna just going to loosely bring that around the hook shank. Oh, I didn't check this. So I'm going to make sure that my thread as well is to the very end of where I had the thread before. Loosely around. Oop, open the vise again. Loosely around. A couple of loose wraps. And then pull tight. And then this is when we're going to start creating those segmented body pieces. So I'm going to go... I don't know, it's as you like, but a couple millimeters up towards the uh, the vise, and I'm going to pull these back so I'm not pulling any of the moose body, just this deer belly, and I'm going to try to pull it pretty evenly around, um, just so that the body looks better. Pull it tight back. I'm going to cord up my thread here, spinning it clockwise. One, two, pull it tight. Oh, I broke one of the deer hairs. That'll happen. If you pull it too tight, you'll just kind of bust those deer hairs. Um, just cut them. You don't want to do that too much. And then I, I kind of I wrapped it through the hair so I'm not trapping a bunch of it. It just looks neater when you tie it that way. And then a couple here, pull it tight. If you end up with a couple of those deer hairs shorter than the rest of the body, that's okay. You can just trim them out. It's not going to make that big of a difference. It's going to make the taper look a little bit awkward, but fish don't care that much. And then up to here, I'd like to do four segments in that body. A couple wraps. Now when I get to this point, I'm going to make a couple whip finishes. You could do just a couple half hitches. You could super glue this if you wanted to, but I don't find that this is normally a problem area because I'm going to wrap over this with a bunch of secure thread wraps when I get to the uh, part where I'm tying this onto the hook shank. And then again, just like we did before, I'm not going to trim that close. I'm going to trim that long. And we're kind of done with this part of the fly. So if you're, if you're cranking out a bunch of these, I recommend you just do like this part and then do it again, and then do it again, however many of these flies you're trying to tie, um, just so you don't have to take the needle out of the vise. Oh, I missed a, a, one of these olive deer hairs. I'm going to trim that out. Um, just so you don't have to take the needle out of the vise a bunch of times um, and basically hit the reset button every time. So I'm going to slide this off. The wax makes it nice and easy to slide off of there. Take that out of the vise. And we are going to be tying on a size 8 TMC 100. In size eight, it's a TMC <clears throat> 100 in size eight. All right, I'm gonna mash this barb. Put another mash on the Barbie. That's a stupid joke. All right. Kyle liked it. <laughs> Kyle gave me a a pity, slow <laughs> jet of air out his nose and a half smile. Not a laugh. <laughs> God, I might need to tighten this vise up. Alright, next you can kind of see that with this body there's like a little bit of upturn in one direction. And I'm going to try to make that upturn curve up away from the top of the hook shank. And I'm going to do a pinch wrap here. Like, yep. Oh, no, it wasn't. Wasn't the right size? Mm -mm. 
Rut row. We're having vice problems. Pull up, pull up, pull up, and then a really important part of making sure this thing doesn't twist around the shank, you can see as I start to tighten, it's just going to wrap around. Hold it there, pull all of this material up out of the way, and make a couple, oh crap, those threads get in the way, make a couple wraps around the bare shank up and back, and then you can, as you go, wrap through the butts, back up, letting the the hair go as you wrap back up towards where you tie this in and then a couple more up It doesn't hurt to have too many thread wraps here. God this thing is all over the place Up towards the front I'm gonna wrap in this thread pause We're having some equipment malfunctions here today folks Nice, nice and tight. And we're gonna wrap the thread back. That should help prevent this thing from coming undone. And I'm just gonna trim out all this messy gear here. What'd you just do, dog? All right, next. Oh my God, <laughs> that's on there tight. <laughs> next, I'm gonna take some of this microfly, micro fine dry fly dub in uh, bluing olive and bluing olive olive. Do they call it don't BWO need olive? BWO olive. Huh. You can, uh, if you need cash to pay for that, you could, you could pick up your cash at your ATM machine and use your PIN number. Yes, very important. So I'm gonna really, I'm gonna dub this quite lightly, quite lightly. It's so freaking quiet in here. Jeepers! I like that library vibe. Librarian vibe. And uh, just working my way back up. That kind of came undone. Really thin dubbing noodle here. Helps to build that taper more easily. Alright, and then I'm going to use kind of a blend of dubbings here for the thorax of the fly. I'm going to use a little bit of uh, Peacock Black Ice Dub. Just a pinch, that's too much. Just a pinch here. And then I'm going to blend up with that some Hair's Mask dyed black. I'm going to pull some hair from the ears some hair from the mask. I want kind of a combination of the fluffy stuff and the uh, spiky stuff. Oh, pulling it from the wrong side. Like an idiot. I don't need that much here, but I like to lay down a little bit of a, a dubbing base for before I put on the the hackle and the deer hair and then I'm also going to use a little, I got a little cider post on there because it's kind of tough to see the uh, the dark gray deer hair wing um, and then we want a little bit of visibility especially on the Mackenzie with the choppy broken water um, so again not that much I'm only going to put on a little bit of this at the beginning too let's get it started See you, Kyle. Hey, Kyle. <coughs> All 
All right, next I'm gonna take a, this is a real long saddle hackle. Um, that looks like about a good length there. I'm gonna tie this in. What color is that? Black knot. No, it's black. Got an all black saddle here. A few tight wraps. Put it back, out of the way, trim it out. And then I'm gonna take a patch of this. It's kinda like dyed dark gray deer hair. You can use regular deer hair, it doesn't matter all that much. I just like to make it look more like the natural. And these are big bugs. They're they are huge. I was a uh, I teach tennis is my my job. Um, this is just I just do this for fun because I have a blast doing it. Uh, it was like three weeks ago. I was teaching a tennis lesson, and a green drake flew onto the court. It was the biggest freaking green drake I have ever seen. It would like I don't know. It was like a size like four hook sized green drake. The thing was just an absolute beast. And the, the Mackenzie fish aren't normally super shy about coming up for a dry fly, so I decided, I mean, this this is a big dry. This is not like a small green drake. Um, but I like fishing big flies, as I think, especially dries, as I think a lot of, a lot of you guys enjoy it. It's a blast! I'm going to trim out uh, the ends there prior to putting it on the top and then I'll spin it counterclockwise to make it corded up or sorry spin it clockwise to make it corded up and then I'm going to pinch wrap pull down and up under tension up through the butts up through the butts up through the butts I'm going to go right back to that first initial tie-in point I'm going to take a piece of this para post you can use whatever color you want um, actually that's a little long <clears throat> I'm going to do that again sorry folks Trim out a little bit more. If your deer hair wing is too long, it can make the fly end up riding sideways, which is not so good. That looks a little better. And take some of this pair post. This just helps again with visibility. It might help a little bit with flotation too. Pull down. Another one, pull up. And then wrap in front. Awesome. And then go down to in front of that deer hair. And I like to trim this at kind of an angle here, upwards towards where the deer hair ends. Cool. Uh, next, we're going to make the, uh, the tilt wing. I'm going to get this first wrap, got to make sure it's underneath all of the stuff, all of that deer hair, all the butts, all the, the ends, and underneath that pair post. Don't want to pull it too tight because I don't want to pull it out, and I have to go back a couple steps, and that would suck. We have like five or six wraps here. I'm going to pull all this back. Find the end. Pinch wrap it. Awesome. And then trim out the end. Sweet. Basically all done. You could whip finish it right now. I'm just going to add a little bit of extra dubbing to the front. Just clean up the head of the fly. I ran out earlier, so I just got to pull some more off my hair's mask. Sweet. Sweep it back. Add a little bit more in there. And whip finisher off. Yeah, I'm excited to fish this one once the green drakes start showing up here. I heard, I saw it on Instagram, I don't remember who. Uh, 
said it, but apparently there were so many green drakes coming off on the Deschutes over the weekend that it, there were like seagulls coming out of the woodwork to come and eat green drakes <laughs> on the water. And it was just like birds are going crazy. Um, so yeah, hopefully we see some of that here soon. Green drakes can be a pretty fun hatch to fish. Um, but yeah, hope you guys enjoy. Tie it. I mean, you could tie it with different colors. You could tie it for any type of drake you want. Um, if you want to tie it a little bit subtler and you don't want to go for the uh, the giant dry that I just tied, um, feel free. But yeah, hope you guys enjoy. Hope you tie some up. And if you do and you catch fish on them, please let me know. I love that. Uh, but yeah, tie lines.